Good evening. Two of the BBC's biggest stars are off the air tonight. Russell Brand has resigned and Jonathan Ross has been suspended as the corporation finally bows to growing public anger about their offensive broadcast on Radio 2. Brand said he took complete responsibility for the crude phone calls to the veteran actor Andrew Sachs. Jonathan Ross has also publicly apologised, but is that enough to save his job? The BBC's Director General said today both the stars were guilty of a gross lapse of taste. The number of complaints has now passed 27,000. Paul Davis reports. He was already suspended from the BBC. Tonight, Russell Brand said it would be better if he left the corporation. I only do that radio show because I want to make people laugh and make people happy. And obviously it's gone beyond the point where I do that. Obviously I'm making people unhappy and angry and sad. So I'd like to not do that radio show anymore. And he apologised to those he'd hurt. It's just, I was being really silly and got caught up in the spirit of the moment. And it was certainly not my intention to hurt Andrew, a man who I very much admire, or to embarrass his granddaughter Georgina. He ended with an appeal on behalf of Jonathan Ross. And I don't want to cause any more trouble, but I would say, like, you know, what Jonathan did, while silly, was not malicious. He's not a malicious man. He's a family man. He's a lovely, kind gentleman that did something that was a little bit silly. Andrew Sachs, the veteran actor on the receiving end of lewd comments about his granddaughter, says he respects Brand's decision to resign. Speaking for the first time about the controversy, he confirmed he'd received full apologies from both Brand and Ross. They both apologised to me. Both sent very nice letters, very nice, which I appreciate and I shall respond to. And, uh, and flowers. Not for me, I hope, and for my wife, I guess. He said he would not be calling in the police. I'm not out for revenge or anything like that. These two performers, I'm a performer, and sometimes it goes very wrong, and it's up to them to do better. But he revealed that a BBC producer had assured him that the offensive material would be cut from the programme before it was broadcast. He said, would you do the whole thing again next week if you're free? I said, that's a good idea. Then you can cut everything you've done and we'll have a proper interview. And that's the last I heard of him. Suspending his two stars, Director General Mark Thompson said, it's clear from the views expressed by the public that this broadcast has caused severe offence, and I share that view. In the coming days, we will announce what action we will take. In the meantime, I have decided that it is not appropriate for either Russell Brand or Jonathan Ross to continue broadcasting on the BBC. And, um, Georgina Bailey, Andrew Sachs' granddaughter, is now telling her story through the Sun newspaper. She admits she once had a sexual relationship with Russell Brand, but says he and Ross deserve to be punished. It's despicable, yeah, it's, um, you know, calling me that um, in public, not only does it damage my relationship but with my granddad, but it could permanently damage my life as well. Jonathan Ross has now issued his first statement saying, I am deeply sorry and greatly regret the upset and distress that my juvenile and thoughtless remarks on the Russell Brand show have caused. I have not issued a statement previously because it was my intention and desire to offer an apology to all those offended on my Friday night program. However, it was a stupid error of judgment on my part and I offer a full apology. So one star has decided to go ahead of all inquiries. The focus now very much on the fate of Ross, the corporation's £6 million a year man. Paul Davis, News at 10. Sir Michael Lyons, the chairman of the BBC Trust, touring TV and radio studios this morning. The Trust is meant to regulate the BBC on behalf of licence payers. Sir Michael's message, this won't happen again. The BBC uh, is, uh, takes its responsibilities for standards seriously, is tightening editorial controls and recognises that, that what happened on the 18th of October on the Russell Brown programme was completely unacceptable, but also raises an issue about the understanding within the BBC of, of where the boundaries lie. Outside Jonathan Ross's London home, reporters and photographers gathered. There was no sign of the presenter, but there was criticism of the BBC and its director general for not acting faster or with greater firmness. He has said that this is a final warning to the entertainers that there is a line that should not be crossed. He needs to learn as well that uh, this is his final warning as well. If he makes a mistake like he's made this time, I think people will be calling for his head. 
Meanwhile, Radio 2 presenters were this morning without their boss, the network's controller. She resigned yesterday. I just hope that at least her sacrifice uh, will bring everything back down to earth a little bit and uh, we'll get a sense of proportion. And as far as I'm concerned, I just hope it's all not going to detract from children in need. One presenter was asked how Jonathan Ross and his brand of edgy comedy would fare once his 12-week suspension ends. Well, it'll be interesting to see how he manages, given the, the damage to this, this radio station. Um, I'm going to be interested to see that. Um, I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. And that perhaps reflects the biggest problem for the BBC raised by all of this. Older viewers and listeners, by and large, just don't like the kind of laddish comedy of people like Russell uh, Brand and Jonathan Ross. Younger audiences love it. Among all the thousands of complaints to the BBC this week, one group stood out. That was the audience to Radio 1, the youngest network, most of whom, it seemed, just didn't understand what the problem was. Now, satisfying both those groups with very different tastes while sticking to the BBC's guidelines, as Sir Michael Lyons, the chairman of the Trust, wants, well, that's going to be very tricky indeed. Sophie. Nick, thank you very much.